morning. This is Georgia Raisman and the Monday Scoop. Today I'm with Junia Doan, a friend and recent acquaintance who is a fellow videographer, or actually not videographer, videography subject. Junia has a television program uh, in Michigan and in New York uh, called The Spark. Junia's background is she's a New Yorker by background and a graduate of Barnard College, but after college she moved to Michigan and then had a career both in arts and philanthropy and has taken that to the field of making people acquainted with who their inner selves are, who their best selves are, and how to help bring that out. And the people that she's talked with online and, and actually in front of a TV screen have been people who have helped us understand how to become our better selves. I'm interested in how you got to that spot, Junia. So take us from that. How did you get there? You, you have an arts background and... An I, I was an economics major and actually I had walked oh. in what would be called Wall Street. Uh, so I live on that side as well as the other side of the Those are choices in sides. life. Yeah, I two know sides it, of it, the brain. it is uh, a Taurus Gemini, and um, in any case, um, I uh, I started the program. It, it actually started beforehand. About the 90s, I started to notice this Islamic um, aggression coming up, and I thought, mm mm mm. <laughs> We've got an issue here. Mm -hmm. And then when 2001 hit, uh, when they flew into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and, you know, in Washington, I was going to a luncheon for women leaders. And I walked in a couple of minutes late, and everybody's face was as if they couldn't smile or talk. And I said to them, stop this immediately. You know, today we can give blood, and tomorrow, and, and, and make a donation, and then each of us will figure out, or try and figure out, how we can help the country. And uh, so I took myself seriously, mm -hmm. and I went through, um, I don't speak Arabic, and I went through, I'm not scientifically educated, so I can't, you know, get in that line of work, and I didn't think I could be a spy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I said, the one thing I really do well, my friends tell me, is inspire. And uh, so my original idea was to do a three-minute television program, of, uh, or even one minute, on philosophy. And because I felt people needed strength, they needed inner strength, and mm -hmm. they needed to develop resilience, because we were all, uh, including my daughter, who had just moved to New York, uh, you know, shattered, <laughs> sort of in a static yeah. position. Yeah. Um, in any case, so one day in Midland, I was walking along, you know, taking a little exercise stroll, and this, you know, you look pretty, whatever, when you're walking. And uh, this guy I didn't recognize comes up to me. Hi, Junior, how are you? I said, fine, who are you? <laughs> and he ran the local television uh, thing. And I said, say, I'm, I'm interested, you know, I have this sort of idea. Does that make sense? Or mm -hmm. is that a really, you know, not very swift idea? And he said, no, no. He said, but I really see you doing a half hour program. <laughs> I said well, to him, it's a big jump from one I, I can't talk course. that much, <laughs> is what I told him. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, that's how I started. But I was afraid I couldn't talk that much. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was, for the half hour, I would have two people. Mm -hmm. So that I think I did twice, half hour, two people have. And then I went to a half hour because I found out that I could do that. In fact, I can talk an hour and probably more. But I thought that was a nice amount of time. And the original program, always been a biography program, always unattached to um, today's news, mm -hmm. because I really wanted to be timeless in mm -hmm. content, if possible, or in that direction. Uh, but I wanted to bring out um, the the what I want to say the range of what people could do the resilience you know the character necessary mm -hmm. and uh, so I just sort of started 
And uh, originally it was in my home, and then it was at the casino, and, <laughs> and then it was at a hotel or the art center, and we just, and then it was, um, you know, at the, at the college. And then when I started spending a time in New York, I thought, well, you know, what do you say, you know? And so I do interview in the city here now that I have an apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, although I tried actually to find a studio where I could do these things, but you have to be a resident of the city to mm -hmm. use some of the public, and I really understand that, mm -hmm. but uh, basically it was to no avail for mm -hmm. what I had in, in mind to mm -hmm. do. Then a couple of years ago, so I said that started in 2002. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was called Uncommon Sense with Junior, because that's what I was looking for in people. What was different in thinking that would give us a wider view and a more confident view of the world? So that people could take that message and interpret it in some way that was helpful in their lives and would yes. help them lead their lives in a different way or a stronger way. way. A strengthening right. way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then a couple of years ago or less, I, I just thought there was too much vulgarity and disrespect in the public arena, not necessarily one-on-one -on -one or with your friends or school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was good for young people. I mean, I'm older, I know, I feel that America changes, or where I, I am, changes about every seven years. Just mm -hmm. slightly the culture changes. And uh, so the people who are 18, 20, 25, they could only swim in the 18 years or 25 years that they've been on the planet. Mm -hmm. Those of us who have lived longer have seen America through its various experiences. Mm -hmm. So I changed the program, still a biography program, but the intent is to show what people are really excited about, mm -hmm. particularly younger people. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I wanted to do that is I wanted to be a counter to some of what I perceive is the pessimism and um, things are going to get worse and da 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 da, which I don't think is part of the American experience. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't have hard times, it's that you meet the moment, right? Mm -hmm. And you people volunteer to help and you solve problems. Mm -hmm. America is unique in that, mm -hmm. that this voluntary association. And de Tocqueville talked about it, but, but it, it persists, you know, yeah. uh, two centuries later. Yeah, and we do see it. It's interesting because one of the other people I've been speaking to recently, we were about to talk about the uh, generational difference between, and the, the, uh, the perceptions of uh, what needs to be said and what can't be said among the, the, that 18 to 25 year old generation, the, the woke generation who can't, who won't allow you to say certain things there because it's, it's, un, it's not received discourse anymore. You can't, you can't have, the, and, and free speech as a concept is not a valued concept. Um, you, you, uh, you can't say something that might hurt somebody's feelings, or you can't be, or you can't present a topic if it's too politically incorrect. And in our generation, of course, you know, in the 60s, free speech was the value. It was an absolute value to be able to say whatever you said, no matter who you offended, was the purpose that you were put on earth for. So to talk about a, a seismic shift, I mean, is to understate it. And I think it's not a, just a question of being vulgar. It's a question of how do you, how do you talk about things in a way that uh, that is not so protective of the, these del the delicate, what we view as the delicate sentiments of people. You've got to get out there and see, you know, see, uh, see what kids are, are experiencing and say, yes, but you know, you can handle this. You will be stronger if you handle this rather than saying, I, I don't want to hear about it because it might make me nervous or it might make me remember something that was scary in my life or scary in somebody else's life that I like and she shouldn't have to be scared or he shouldn't have to be scared. I guess I'm, I'm being a little digressive here, but I, I would uh, speculate that um, when free speech came in, some, just a short time later, there was a diminution in teaching and practicing good manners. So uh, you were less sensitive to another person's feelings or how, so that got washed out and free speech was but I, myself, I think you can take almost any statement and ask a person to explain how they got to that 
point mm -hmm. of view. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be personal about it, but mm -hmm. if words are going to bother you, mm -hmm. <laughs> life is really going to bother you mm -hmm. because there's some really hard times in life. Yeah, and you, you're absolutely and right in that there are better ways of, ex of asking for an explanation of why that bothers you and in ways that are more not empathetic. Not why that bothers you, but how, how, did, uh, how did you come to that thinking? Yeah. Uh, I ha happen to be a supporter of capitalism. Yeah. I think you want to have a problem, let the capitalists solve it because yeah. it's the human creativity spirit right. that can do it. Now people are talking about other kinds of forms. Fine, right. how did you come to that? Right. Why do you think it's better? Have you studied history right. where it's been tried? What right. are the downsides that you know? Right. What are the downsides you can guess? You know. So uh, the idea of having a discussion, I guess, is what uh, interests me in people. Yeah, uh, and, having, and uh, having, uh, having an open mind about how people got to that point and having that discussion. Do you, are you finding it possible to reach people who are talking about that and, have, and having discussions with them? Or are we I, too far I apart? find, what I find actually sad and almost tragic is how close-minded uh, it is all right now to be. Mm. And I don't think that's useful <laughs> in family relationships and mm -hmm. civic relationships and any kind of relationships. And I'm not sure how to remediate that exactly, except uh, to be different in your own life. Because we can't affect a lot in life, but mm -hmm. we can affect who we're running into or mm -hmm. how we conduct ourselves or how they can. We mess mm -hmm. up, you know, I mess up. Um, but I, th I th uh, uh, condemning and moaning is not my style. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a, it's, I guess it's maybe a function of our contemporary polarization in general that everybody's forced, feels they forced into the corners that they're forced into and they're, they become so, uh, so fierce about the corner that they're in that they, they do uh, fight off any idea of being able to accept another idea. There's, a, there's an organization that I heard of last, last summer called Better Angels, <laughs> which is based on um, Abraham Lincoln's speech in which he talked about reaching the better angels of ourselves. Uh, and it's an organization that attempts to bring together people who have wildly disparate ideas on the right and the left and have them just have meetings together in which they find that there is common ground on things that might not be related to politics, but at least it makes you understand that the person coming to the meeting who has this very disparate idea politically still has something in common with you in some other matter, whether it's you know, how, they, how you live every day, how your children are, what you think about the price of eggs, I mean, whatever. And it's just worthwhile and bearing that in mind in our, all of this very uncivil discourse that we live through every day. I think it's intensified in the coast. You know, I split my time between Michigan and New York. Mm -hmm. Michigan, who you are politically is about, at least where I am, is about 17% about maybe a little higher. In New York, <laughs> It's 90 yeah, odd, do you yeah, know? Yeah. And so I, I, I think New York is miss out, actually, yeah. because in Michigan, where we are, we see the character of people. We see are they community minded. We see their strengths right. and weaknesses. And so we have more of a chance to find what that organization is trying to do, which is what do we have in common and can we build on it? Right. And that, I think, is a better thing than locking people out because of one slice of who they are. Of their experience. I wonder yes. if it's a, a, a big city, small community thing, though, because we spend a lot of time on Nantucket. And Nantucket is a very, very small community. And of course, it's an isolated community because being an island and dealing with the issues that come up with being an island, which is that you know, if there's a nor'easter and you don't get bread or milk for three days, everybody is literally in the same boat together with that. And there's a lot of having to deal with, you know, take care of each other. But it's a very tight community and one in which there are differences of wild differences of opinion politically, but everybody understands everyone else as a whole. So yes, he's a rabid Democrat, or yes, he's a rabid Republican, but he's also a great firefighter, and he's a really great basketball coach, and he's always there for the kids, or he's always there for the community, and, and so you see the person as a whole, and you don't see the person as that label. Um, so I'm not sure whether it's a matter of whether you're in New York, and New York is such a big city that the easy label is the one that's applied 
or w whether it's a matter of a small uh, well, town versus... Well, we can only or... extemporize from our personal experience, yeah. so I can't say people two yeah. blocks from here would uh, agree with what I say. Um, I think, I just think people are very interesting and they have a lot to say yeah. and well, you miss an opportunity if yeah. you reject them or close them off. Yeah. I mean, I've had <laughs> without, you know, uh, having a chat. I'm yeah. big on having a chat yeah. and see what happens. And so the, the current program that you do, The Spark, involves yes. you're inviting a lot of people who are contributing in different ways to their community and and and, uh, and sort of showing people how it's possible to live their lives after retirement or during retirement to to still bring meaning to their lives and help to their communities actually it's um, all age groups it mm -hmm. uh, so I interviewed a woman who's like 22 who has a, a business but it started out as a volunteer idea to take young girls who have no confidence and build their confidence, and she's got a little business going for it. Oh, wow. Yeah. What an interesting idea. Yes, it is an interesting mm -hmm. idea. So it's for, not, I don't mean to say it's for younger people, but it's showing how um, you can be um, uh, doing well by doing good, they used to say, but I, I really, you can feel that you have meaning in what you do, but you can also support yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully, if she makes it, which mm -hmm. we hope so. Mm -hmm. I help her now and again, uh, but there are a lot of examples there. I, I have less of an opportunity here because I just don't run into that age group mm -hmm. as, as mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. But I think the idea, I, my personal desire, I would feel very happy if, uh, because people say, Junior, how do you determine success? I said, well, that's pretty amorphous, you know, mm -hmm. when the language gets better, when people get more polite to each other and affable, and when they gain or regain a sense of optimism, mm -hmm. I feel I will have had a small part. Mm -hmm. And I feel called to do that. Well, I, I think that's a wonderful message. How do you think people can, people who are in the 55 and old, older bracket, which is the group to which my uh, program is intended to uh, reach, how do you feel they can attempt to do that and find that in their own communities? Well, in uh, their own personal lives? Uh, yes. People have a different need about having meaning in their lives, mm -hmm. so that's on the side. But there are all sorts of opportunities in schools, in literacy, in senior services to go, if your life is together, not everybody's person, <laughs> you know, we all go up and down in that mm -hmm. regard, mm -hmm. but you can attach yourself to any one of those kinds of things. I think we ought to have a grandma in the school Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who's been through it all, who can mm -hmm. calm the mothers and calm the kids who don't mm -hmm. really have good mothers. Mm -hmm. And be, I think you age in, or at least maybe I'm experienced that, of, of um, and the wrinkles do that too, but they, they, that you become not, uh, I remember when I forgot my first wrinkle, and I was moaning to Ted, my late husband, I said, look, I've got my first wrinkle. And he said, Junior? you're on your way to being a wise woman. Mm -hmm. And I think older people, whether they're men or women, have that opportunity and also responsibility to be the wise person in the ruckus and the upset and the chaos mm -hmm. that people who are younger inevitably live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think they can be the glue, the cement that harmonizes, integrates, sort of an anchor in people's mind at least. Mm -hmm. uh, for the continuity and confidence and uh, all will be well, mm -hmm. all will be well. Well, that sounds like a perfect scoop for today. And I appreciate your coming and sharing that with me, Junie. And I know you have a very tight schedule, so I appreciate you stopping <laughs> in and sharing that much with me. Thank you so much. Oh, a pleasure, always. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you again next week.